Hey everybody, welcome back to Capsule Crash. I'm Peter, let's jump into today's video. I'm changing the format up a little bit here today um, because I'm moving some things around in my office and who knows, as I work on this channel and time goes by, I'll definitely be shooting in different locations, so it's a good idea to start that today. I wanted to do a breakdown of all of the camera gear and equipment that I have for two reasons. One, I think that part of my journey in essentialism and minimalism is finding the technology I can work with uh, that's best for me, that lets me create the things I wanna create efficiently and, and easily. I've always considered myself a filmmaker in some capacity, most of the time it's I'm making fun little videos and things for YouTube, most of which are private now, so don't go looking for them. But I also am an adult now, and so as a kid, I could never afford real equipment or gear to make anything, and now I can. And so I built up a little collection of stuff, and so here we go. So I have two DSLR cameras that I use for all of my shoots. The first one is my main camera. This is a Canon 60D. I bought this from a friend of mine a couple years ago. Um, it's my favorite thing I've ever used to shoot photography with, and that's because it's the most advanced thing I've ever used to shoot photos with. It takes great video as well, so I've used it for some video projects. Projects. And overall, while it is really heavy and really bulky and a little bit old by today's standards, uh, I love it. I love shooting with it. When I was in college a couple years ago, I didn't have a camera of my own except for a GoPro I had bought. So I always really loved when I could use equipment from the school on projects. Um, and one of the features that I always looked for was one that had this flip out screen. Now that we kind of take that for granted now in camera gear. But for me, at least that was like a huge goal because it allowed me to do things that uh, I didn't think possible before, like shoot videos similar to this. By the way, I'm shooting this video on a camera I'm borrowing from a friend of mine. So that's why the quality a lot better, uh, but most of the time, the videos that you see, I shoot with this 60D. Now, when I get a gig to do photography or video, it's super important to me that I'm present for every single moment of that event. So one of the best things I have to use with the 60D is the extra battery grip. If you've never seen one of these things, what it basically does is allow this slide out tray to hold two batteries at once, put that inside the battery grip. Then you insert the battery grip, just like you would a battery into the bottom of the camera. It screws on like a tripod mount, and then it hugely increases your battery life and gives you an extra set of focus and shutter buttons on the back here. So you can take pictures that are vertical or you can turn it the regular way and take them with the horizontal button. That's a critical part of my shooting setup for any paid gig. Um, when I'm just doing regular photography, I have to have a little lighter, so I usually just have a battery in the camera as is. For Christmas, my parents gave me this great camera strap system that snaps on and off of these little clasps on either side of the camera. It's sort of a guitar strap uh, type design here and it has these little clips at the end so you can snap it on and off of the camera as needed, which has been super helpful because I don't always want a camera strap. Sometimes I'm just holding it or it's on a tripod. When I do want it, you don't want to waste all that time looping it in and out and getting it connected. So a uh, great thing. I didn't realize how much I would appreciate it until I had it. Now, another thing I invested in because of doing paid photography gigs was memory cards. While there's definitely something to be said for having a bunch of smaller capacity cards, so you have less risk of file loss or damage if you were to drop or lose one card, um, I find myself really liking not having to worry about storage space for long stretches. So with that said, I have three 256 gigs big SD cards. Um, I just switched between these and because I'm usually shooting with two cameras that gives me enough time to use both of those cards and then uh, have a backup if needed. I keep all my SD cards in this plastic case that has a rubber interior where all the cards are held in a way that if it was dropped, uh, it can't really be damaged. That's hugely helpful, but one piece of advice I would give you if you're looking for one of these is uh, get one with a lot more storage capacity than you think you need because once you've got just a couple cards, you'll realize that you wish you had more space. Um, at least for me, I wish it was a little bit bigger. It only holds four cards. So just something to look for. We're going to get to lenses in just a minute, but I did want to point out that I do have two cameras that I use for most of my paid shoots. Uh, most of the time I'm not using this second camera, so it's not nearly as nice as the 60D. Uh, it's just something that I keep around to have as a backup in case I feel like I need it. And on any gig where I'm doing photography and videography, I'm shooting video with the 60D and I'll just have this other camera as my photo camera. That camera is the Canon T2i and this is kind of all geared up and ready to go uh, because it just sits in my bag in case I need it. I also have the extra battery grip for this camera, which is hugely helpful if I'm taking a ton of photos. Uh, I just want to have that ready at all times and have the battery last all day. I have this hand grip thing on the side because I don't have a camera strap on it. So this like straps it to my hand so I can just hold it with me most of the time. And if I need to move my hands a little bit, uh, it still hangs on. And this one does not have a flip out screen like the 60D, but I'm not so worried about it because one, I don't use this camera nearly as often. And secondly, with the 60D, if I'm taking video, I use that screen to set up my angles and check everything and whatever. But with this, with the T2i, I'm most of the time I'm just looking through the viewfinder. So I'm not so worried about it. Like I said before, I have a 256 gig card in that camera at all times ready to go. So uh, that lets me take as many pictures and videos as I need to over the course of maybe one day or a couple of events without feeling the need to rush back home and back everything up. Speaking of backing things up, let's cover a little bit of file management. See, as a photographer and videographer, it was instilled in me at a very uh, young age and early time in my life that if you don't have a physical backup of a file, uh, consider it lost because if it's not there right now, the minute you lose that first copy, it's gone. So with that said, everything that's a finished product photo of mine, uh, there's probably 10 copies. It's, you know, there's a, I've downloaded it onto my phone. I've got it on each of my computers. It's in Lightroom in the cloud backup. I have it on a hard drive. Like it's everywhere. For the source,
source files for any video projects and then all of the raw photos that I import to edit, there are two backup copies. One is on a physical hard drive where I have everything sorted out by date. And then the second copy is stored on my Apple iCloud account. It's a file management system I've worked on a lot over the years and it's definitely not perfect. And there are times that if I need to find something old, I have a lot of trouble getting to it. But in general, anything over the last two years or so is easily accessible. And that's the window of time I consider myself taking photography seriously. All right, well, if I'm taking it so seriously, what lenses am I actually using? Well, in total, I own five lenses. The first one I barely even count as a lens. This is the 18 to 55 Canon kit lens that comes with pretty much all of their cameras. I got this second hand from somebody. I never use it. I just came bundled with the T2i when I bought it. I don't even have a lens cap for it. I just keep this UV filter on here so that if anything touches it, I can just clean that off. But I, I don't care about this lens. And most of the time it just sits on a desk. The only use that I have found for it that's really great is when I shoot videos like this, where I'm a little bit less concerned about getting the most pristine quality all the time. Uh, it makes for a quick lens that I can snap on and I can zoom for shots during the video. Although I can still zoom with the camera I'm currently using, using its own kit lens. It's Canon M50. It's, it's a whole deal. Next up is a lens I got pretty recently. It's become one of my favorites. I'll put a few photos on the screen for you to check out that I took with this lens. This is a Canon 60 millimeter macro lens and it's really great. It takes these really beautiful, super close up shots that capture a ton of detail. I really like the feel of it and I'm super excited to use it more. I just haven't taken a lot of time to learn it. Next up is a lens I think every photographer ought to own, especially if you're gonna do event photography. It's this beast right here. This is a 28 to 135 Canon lens. So it is a zoom lens. You get a ton of distance out of this thing. This is definitely an older lens. So it doesn't have the super fast focusing that a lot of new lenses do, uh, but it works great for event photography. You can still capture things very fast and it does have a good depth of field. So what I like about it is that when you're doing event photography, like something outdoor or a sport or something like that, if your shutter speed's good and you're able to capture things as they're happening, you can get really close in on the angles without having to physically move to get there. And it's going to get almost everything in focus, which will be great. The third lens is a 30 millimeter Sigma lens. Uh, I love this lens. I put it primarily on my second shooting camera because it's a little bit wider than some more traditional portrait lenses. So if I'm shooting an event, my main camera usually has that 28 to 135 or my last lens, which I'll show you in a minute here. Uh, but this 30 lets me get a bunch of wide shots without going like too gigantic. It's 30 millimeter 1.4. It's great. And I use it all the time. Finally, uh, call me basic, which I am. Call me, you know, an, a beginner in camera gear. But this is my all time favorite lens I've ever shot with. That, of course, is the Canon 50 millimeter 1.8. I've heard this called the girlfriend lens because people get lenses like this so they can take pictures of their girlfriend and tell people they do photography. And honestly, if that's all I'd ever learned to do with it, I would be okay with that because every single picture I've ever taken with this, I am in love with. The 1.8 is awesome because it really means that anything close to the frame while you're focusing on a subject that's a little farther away, it's just going to blur into this really beautiful bokeh. Everything feels super high resolution when it's in focus, but anything that you want to blur a little bit will just have this perfect quality about it. It's also an extremely light lens, so it's very easy to have attached to your camera at all times. So unless the situation demands it, this is almost always on my 60D um, when I'm shooting with most of the time. So where do I keep all this stuff? Well, why don't we grab the camera real quick and I'll show you guys the setup for packing this into my camera bags. This is the camera bag I use for my Canon 60D. So anytime I just grab my camera bag and go during the day, uh, this is the bag I'm grabbing. It has this awesome huge enamel pin on the front. I will link the company I bought this from in the description because they are super great and you should buy from them as well as this second pin of the Canon 60D that I bought from the same company. And then this really cool camera pin that my sister got me for Christmas. On the front here, there's a little bit of a pouch that pulls out. It's on a stretchy band. Inside here, I put my container of SD cards. That helps me keep them nearby uh, and organized, but also separate from everything else in the bag. That slides into the front pocket where I can then buckle it up. And then in the very front here, I've got just my camera strap and another strap that I use in case I have a second camera with me. Opening the bag up here, we have sort of a three column system with the column all the way on the left being a double tier spot where I put three lenses. If we want to lift up this panel here, underneath here is where I put this huge 28 to 135 lens uh, because it tucks away a little bit as I don't use this lens every single day. With that laid down in the bottom, we grab the 50 millimeter, which stands up here, and then my 60 millimeter macro lens, which I place directly next to it. In the middle column, I put the 60D's battery grip, which I may or may not use depending on the day, so I want to have it available to me at all times. And then I take the 60D and I slide that all the way on the right side. So that goes right in here, and now everything's inside the bag. At the top of the bag, I have this removable metal looking pouch that was originally used to store film when this bag was used for a film camera. And then I have a large retracting blue metal pole with a tripod mount on the top, just in case I have to get any shots where I have to raise the camera high above my head. Finally, lately I've been including in the bag one disposable camera, which I've been using to just take miscellaneous shot throughout the day with the intent of working on delayed gratification for myself. If I can't see these pictures until they're done, I mean, I feel like I'll appreciate them more, but that might just be me being a little bit uh, too artistic and maybe I should just take regular pictures. Who knows? Let's get this one out of the way and I'm going to pack up the T2i. This camera is packed much simpler in my larger gig bag. I tucked the 18 to 55 lens just in the very corner here uh, 
underneath a little flap. I keep the 30 millimeter lens and the battery grip on this camera at all times, and I just slide it in the right-hand side here. Here on the exterior of the bag, I have four batteries, one charger and one charging cord, and I do keep one external USB-C laptop microphone with me all the time. Uh, that way, if I need to record any other type of audio for the gig that I'm at, I have the chance to do that. The audio for this video is recorded with this shotgun microphone. It's extremely old and almost broken, so I am not surprised if any of the audio doesn't sound great on this video. And believe it or not, that's everything I own. While the entire T2i second camera setup might not be essential, to me, it kind of is. A big part of my reason for switching to a minimalism and essentialism is because I feel like I consume constantly and I don't create. I'm not having an equivalent output. So having equipment and gear around me that helps me create is hugely beneficial. If any of the stuff I own helps me take in things from the outside, like media or things that I see in nature and create something with it, then I consider that a very helpful and essential tool. And with something like a disposable camera, I'm helping to retrain my brain to not look for constant gratification. When I take a picture, sometimes even knowing I'll see it later that day, it makes me think of it as super important and very good for myself. But really the last 10, 20 years or so are the first time ever that people were able to take photographs and instantly see the result. And yet we constantly have a sense of nostalgia for old photographs. So for me, if I can instantly create a sense of nostalgia, it's not worth it. If I can delay that a little bit with a disposable camera and get those pictures later and remember the events, then I think it is. I'd love to hear in the comments anything that you choose to create. Even if the other things in your life are boiled down to their essentials, what's something you spend a lot of time and money on to make sure that you've got the best? For me, even when photography and video were just a hobby, I still treated them like a craft and a job. Now, I didn't always have the money to spend to have professional equipment, but as I've increased my gear and the things that I own, it's helped to have the discipline that I'm using all these things to constantly create and put something out. Hey, I mean, you're even watching something I'm putting out right now, so I guess it's working a little bit, huh? All right, guys, thanks for watching. Say cheese. If you enjoyed this video, uh, first of all, thank you. I'm trying to put one of these out every single week of 2022 and then into the future. I don't know how consistent I'm going to be, but hey, here's another week. So I guess I did it. Other than that, just the standard YouTuber guy stuff, like, subscribe, share the video, leave a comment, follow me on social media, find me everywhere else. You know, I'm there. I'm there to say, hey, so I uh, love to connect with you. Just uh, shoot me a message. Watch the video. I like the video. I don't know. All right. Uh, I'll see you guys in a week. Thanks for watching.